Hello, and welcome to another video in my Fundamentals of Orchestration series. Today, I'll be taking a look at the low brass family of orchestral instruments, including trombones and tubas. I'll specifically look at construction, historical usage, timbre, technique, and idiomatic writing. And I've composed a few short examples using sample libraries from orchestral tools to help demonstrate the instruments. Let's get started. While both trumpets and horns appeared frequently in the Baroque and early classical orchestras, Low brass instruments did not become regular members of the orchestral brass section until the 19th century. The trombone is actually a fairly old instrument, originating as early as the 15th century throughout Europe. As the Renaissance shifted to the Baroque period, composers like Claudio Monteverdi and Giovanni Gabrielli wrote several works that included trombone, often in sacred vocal music. Handel and Bach used the trombone in a few works, but it wasn't until Beethoven's Fifth Symphony of 1808 that the trombone became an orchestral fixture. Unlike natural trumpets and horns, which eventually added valves to play chromatically, the trombone features a slide mechanism that facilitates a fully chromatic range. There are two U-shaped pieces of cylindrical tubing, with one fitted into the other, and the sliding mechanism is adjusted with the player's arm. Extending the slide outward lowers the fundamental pitch, also known as the pedal tone, thus allowing for the additional notes from the new overtone series. The slide mechanism also means that playing glissandi between slide positions is very easy, making the trombone somewhat unique among brass instruments. There are several different types of trombones, and the most common is the tenor trombone. Originally a valveless instrument, the modern construction often features a single rotary valve called the F trigger, which extends the range downward. There are seven slide positions on the trombone, and moving the slide outward to the next position lowers the pedal tone by a half step. Here are the seven pedal tones on the tenor trombone, and each position allows for the notes of the harmonic series of each pedal tone. It's not all that common to ask the trombonist to perform pedal tones, though the first two or three are possible. Generally speaking, only partials two through seven or eight are commonly played, though professional trombonists can extend the first position up to the tenth or eleventh partial. The F trigger lowers each position's fundamental pitch by a fourth, which lowers the range of the tenor trombone down to bass trombone territory. With the F trigger enabled, the spacing between positions becomes wider in this range, and because of this there are only six positions available, starting with F all the way down to C. The most common modern bass trombone looks very similar to the tenor trombone, but with a larger bell and with more valves. The bass trombone always has an F trigger, and modern bass trombones now often have a G flat trigger as well. Simultaneously depressing both F and G flat triggers further lengthens the overall tubing, allowing for even lower pedal tones. More importantly than extending the range downward, these valves allow for greater flexibility in maneuvering between notes in the lowest register. The standard orchestral trombone section contains two tenor trombones and a single bass trombone. Occasionally a modern orchestral piece will call for an additional tenor trombone, but three total trombones is the norm. In the 19th century, however, not only was the number of trombones used more irregular, the types of trombones varied quite often. The alto trombone has a smaller bell and a more narrow bore, and excels in its upper range. This instrument was especially common in the early 19th century. The contrabass trombone was called upon towards the end of the 19th century by composers like Strauss and Verdi, and continued to be used on occasion by European composers into the early 20th century. The valved trombone is essentially a tenor trombone in which the slide mechanism is replaced by three valves. It's extremely rare, especially in the United States, but on occasion it's found in bands and jazz ensembles, with the advantage being that trumpet players have a much easier time transitioning to valve trombone than to slide trombone. Moving on to the tuba family, the tuba was first introduced into the orchestra during the 19th century, and most tubas feature at least four rotary valves as well as a wide conical bore. The standard orchestral tuba comes in many different sizes and tunings, with the C and double B flat contrabass tubas the most popular. Tuba parts are non-transposing, meaning you as the composer or orchestrator do not need to worry about what transposition to use, and the tuba player will choose which tuba to use depending on the music or what is available. Most orchestras will use just one tuba player, and wind ensembles may include several. The wind ensemble or concert band often features several other members of the tuba family, including the euphonium and baritone. Both of these instruments are more common today than any of the 19th century tuba and low brass members, including the Wagner tuba, tenor tuba, ophiclide, and chimbasso. 
19th century orchestra parts featuring these instruments are often now played by more standard orchestral instruments, like the tuba, euphonium, bass trombone, or even contrabassoon. The practical range of the tenor trombone is from E2, the E below the bass clef, to about B flat 4, although most professional players can go higher, and with the F trigger attachment, notes down to C below the bass clef staff. The lowest octave is dark, a bit unfocused, and actually somewhat weak. It's important to keep in mind the limitations of this register in terms of agility and breath support. Most of the notes in this register can only be played in one position, which means that fast, agile passages could potentially require the player to move from slide position 1 to 7 or vice versa very quickly. For reference, here are the notes within the tenor trombone range, showing which notes are possible in more than one position. Moving quickly between this particular A sharp and B natural, for instance, would be quite a challenge. The next tamboril register includes notes within the bass clef staff all the way up to the E or F above middle C. This is where the majority of tenor trombone music will be written, and the timbre is more focused, full, and powerful. The instrument is capable of more agile passages in this range, especially notes above the bass clef staff, and the trombone can be very effective as a melodic instrument here. Similar to the highest range of the trumpet, the highest tenor trombone notes sound intense and brilliant. It's more difficult to control the notes in this range, and more difficult to play softly. As was the case with the trumpet family, adding mutes can be a very effective timbral change, and many of the same types of mutes are available for trombone, including straight mutes, cup, harmon, bucket, and plunger. Here's an example of the straight mute on tenor trombone. Before moving on, it's worth mentioning that a true legato technique is more complicated on trombone than on the valved brass instruments because of the slide. Legato between notes in the same position or harmonic series is possible, but slurring between notes in different positions require coordination of slide and embouchure, which is quite a bit trickier. Most professional trombonists, however, will make this sound seamless. On the other hand, glissandi between notes is possible because of the slide mechanism. Keep in mind that it is only possible to glissando between notes of the same partial number, in other words, a glissando is possible between, for instance, the third partial of slide position 7 up to the third partial of slide position 1, but you can't change the partial. The following glissando would therefore be impossible. The bass trombone has a practical range from roughly B flat 1 to B flat 4, although it's best to stay below F4. Because most modern bass trombones have both an F and G flat trigger, there are few limitations in this low range. In addition, pedal tones are much easier to produce on bass trombone, and many composers will write pedal tones in their orchestral music. Because of the larger bell, the low register is very strong and full, and bass trombonists are quite used to playing in this range. Like the tenor trombone, notes within the bass clef staff are strong and full, and the bass trombone has similar agility in this register. Notes above the bass clef staff are less common and usually reserved for tenor trombone. While alto trombone has mostly fallen out of favor in the orchestra, we occasionally see music written for contrabass trombone. Though seldom used in the modern orchestra, contrabass trombone as well as the chimbasso have been a favorite among film composers and sample library developers. 
the contrabass trombone extends the low range of the trombone family, and because of its cylindrical bore, they provide a powerful wall of sound that is brighter and more piercing than that of the tuba. The tuba has a range from about D1 to G4 and is effective throughout its range. The lowest octave is extremely heavy and full sounding and of course speaks a little more slowly because of the register. Notes here require a lot of air which makes long sustaining passages in this range difficult. The middle register on the tuba is very strong and effective. While young composers tend to give the tuba the notes below the bass clef, the tuba has a warm and powerful sound in the middle register that can be used effectively in melodic and agile passages. Notes above the bass clef staff sound closer in timbre to the horn and have an intense quality that can be very effective in orchestral textures. Euphonium and baritone are very similar in appearance and sound, and are often used in modern concert bands or in the orchestra as replacements for tenor tuba parts. The euphonium has a range from B-flat 1 to B-flat 4, while the baritone has a range from E2 to B-flat 4. They are used somewhat interchangeably, although the baritone is found almost exclusively in band music. Because the baritone has the same fingering as the trumpet, it's common to see music for baritone written in treble clef, sounding a major ninth lower than written, so that trumpet players can easily read the music. Both the euphonium and baritone have a wonderfully mellow timbre, and are capable of greatly expressive lyricism. So that's all for this video, I hope you've enjoyed it. In my next video, I'll take a look at arranging melodies and harmonic accompaniments for the brass section of the orchestra. And after that, I'll be looking at arranging piano music for brass instruments. See you next time.